The question of how and why the United Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN one world dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. Now let's go back to the birth of the Illuminati. They set up what they called the Council on Foreign Relations, commonly referred to as the CFR. And this CFR is actually the Illuminati in the United States. And every war since then, beginning with the French Revolution, has been promoted by the Illuminati operating under various names and guises. What the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 did was give this private banking cartel a total monopoly of printing money. So what you had here was a complete takeover of the government of the United States by these private bankers. They've owned it ever since. We're talking about facts. We're talking about facts here. The Bilderberg Group does exist. The Federal Reserve does exist. The people who are members of the Bilderberg Group are also the people who do control the Federal Reserve. These are all facts. Uh, and, and this is a conspiracy. Years later, Wilson was to write that he had been deceived into signing the Fed into law, murmuring just before he died, I have betrayed my country. And you say both uh, John F. Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln were murdered because they went to the Treasury and started printing non-interest bearing currency, the greenback notes and they were immediately killed because the bankers didn't want to lose these billions of dollars of interest. The, uh, it was the international banking community. Uh, uh, the, the Morgans were an international family. Uh, the, 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 the fortune had first been made in England, uh, and then uh, they transferred their operation here. Uh, but they were allied with the Rothschilds uh, and others in England, and, and these were the people who drafted uh, one of their agents uh, uh, drafted the script for the Federal uh, Reserve, uh, Wa Paul Warburg. But critics point to a famous statement in the early 1800s by Nathan Rothschild to support this claim. If I can uh, issue the money, I care not who makes the laws, because you always buy the lawmakers, and uh, the lawmakers are for sale. So if you have the money, uh, you can get any law passed you want. So who do you care who? whether uh, Bill Clinton is president or uh, uh, who is senator from New Jersey, it doesn't make any difference because you write a check and you get another senator. But the stickiest question in this debate is this, just who owns the Federal Reserve? Well, the city of London set the whole thing up. J.P. Morgan was simply an agent of the Bank of England when he organized this meeting down in uh, uh, Jekyll Island, Georgia. And uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York uh, the stock is principally owned by five merchant banks in London chartered by the Bank of England. So you see, every decision of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York uh, comes out of London. So then, who owns the Bank of England? Oh uh, yes, the Queen of England was one of the original shareholders of the Bank of England. There again, you had another monopoly. Uh, most of the original purchasers of the Bank of England in uh, 1694 uh, their families have owned that stock ever since. And uh, it's, a, it's a monopolistic uh, oligarchy of dynastic families. Some of these families go back 5,000 years. These are not Johnny-come-latelys. These are not nobodies. These are real families. Uh, now, when you see uh, groups like Council on Foreign Relations, Bilderbergers, Trilateral Commission, you have to remember bankers work internationally. No banker just works in one country. They work in all countries. And the central banks in all countries work together through special groups. They, they formed the Council on Foreign Relations at the uh, Versailles Peace Conference after World War I. Now, many uh, conservatives believe the CFR runs in the United States, but it only does it second hand because the real power, uh, the real orders come out of London first. The financial entities that uh, dominate uh the Federal Reserve, the Bilderberg Group, uh, are largely centered around the Rockefeller family and the Rothschild family. 
uh, names such as Chase Manhattan, uh, Citibank, First National Bank of Chicago, I believe. All these groups have moved in the Rockefeller sphere of influence and the Rothschild sphere of influence are the glue that hold the Bilderberg elite together. It's only fitting that we end with a quote from the man who started it all, Woodrow Wilson, who, as we have seen, spent his remaining years regretting what he had done. We are controlled by a small group of dominant men, he said, the worst ruled and most completely controlled government in the civilized world. Some of the biggest men in the United States are afraid of something, he went on, they know that there is a power so organized, so subtle, so interlocked, and so complete that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. Uh, the governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Uh, let's put it this way. Money trumps um, peace sometimes. <laughs>
just wreaked havoc um, and engaged in extreme bad behavior that had extremely uh, dire consequences for the countries where they were operating and operated essentially as the CIA death squad in the Middle East. So the idea that this is the person that should leave, lead the Pentagon because he wants to privatize our wars. Well, he uh, said he was going to drain the swamp. And the joke that I did at that time yeah. was he drained the swamp. And what did he find at the bottom? His cabinet. Uh, yeah, more or so, less, that's what happened. So Eric, he wants to put in Jamie Dimon potentially I as know, Treasury Secretary. I know, I know. So how po- how is that populism? How are people acting like this is a populist ticket? And that's I mean, why maybe JD Vance has you know cloaked himself in, in rhetoric, um, and you know other things to to be the person that sort of gives this populist mm. anti-establishment wash uh, to Trump. But we have to remember what happened last time and, and follow the money because historically in American politics that's what you have to do to know how things are actually going to turn out and I would encourage people to be very vigilant about it but as I noted in my article one of the main reasons to be concerned about Peter Thiel is that uh, the company he's made Palantir is at the heart of the surveillance state and including on the war of domestic terror and some of his companies brag about targeting Trump supporters expressly an irony is that one of Trump and Dave Vance's biggest donors is has a, a video out that I think it's on YouTube even that brags about using their uh, their software their, uh, their their programs to identify January 6 protesters and put them in jail and it seems so crazy and then uh, they're all buddied up with this guy and then well so just to get back really quick so Eric Prince uh, his big idea for you know what his big idea for Gaza was right he he had his big flood idea it. was to flood it with and the ocean, Pentagon told him no ocean but water. imagine if he's in charge of the Pentagon he wanted to flood all of Gaza flood it so that would flood the tunnel kill everybody what is the bug up their ass with Iran now is that just uh, is that let co- me explain is, it to you is, is the that, bug up their ass is a policy paper written by this neocon named Richard Pearl in the late 90s called a clean break and basically, that document, it was written for Netanyahu, even though Richard Pearl is an American that served later in the George W. Bush administration and was an architect of the Iraq War. Uh, in there, in that document, he essentially talks about how Israel uh, needs to uh, engineer the like elimination of, or, uh, of you know, Saddam Hussein and also of the Syrian government. And from then on, uh, it expanded to more countries as the neocons got in power with the George W. Bush administration. And one of the hallmarks of the neocons is again, conflating uh, the US uh, national interest as it relates to foreign policy with Israeli regional interests. And they're, they're not the same a lot of the time. Um, and you know, when it, came, when it comes to Richard Pearl and Peter Thiel, it was actually Richard Pearl who helped Peter Thiel set up Palantir in the early 2000s with Alex Karp and connected them with the godfather of modern surveillance, a man named John Poindexter, uh, who created total information awareness and was previously uh, the highest ranking member of the Reagan administration to be convicted in uh, connection with the Iran-Contra scandal. He was convicted of five five different felonies, right? uh, Yes, and uh, William Barr uh, covered it all up when he was attorney general uh, for Bush senior, and he came back as attorney general under Trump. Um, but anyway, in Iran-Contra, Oliver North and, and Poindexter and others created this database called Main Corps, uh, which contained the names of Americans who were considered unfriendly and could be rounded up uh, during a vaguely defined national crisis that would include a widespread nonviolent against a military intervention abroad. So a massive protest, for example, against a, a U.S. foreign war. Um, people could be rounded up and the Constitution could be suspended to put these Americans away. Explain to people again what Main Corps is. Main Corps is a database that was created by the Iran-Contra people in the 1980s, but it still exists. Um, and uh, it contains names of Americans who can be, who are deemed quote-unquote unfriendly by the national security state and can could be rounded up or incarcerated during a Inca- national crisis. They and actually the said they this. They actually yeah, said the, this. Exp- it came up. It came up during the Iran Contra hearings, and the hearings were shut down when Senator Jack Brooks tried to ask a question. The much the modern reinvention of Maine Corps. 
Yeah, so Main Corp was, uh, is the database, right? Um, and it was uh, the same people that created that, which was in use after 9 11, and uh, as far as we know, still exists. Uh, the last mainstream media report on it was in 2008, and at that point, it had 3 million Americans on it. And as far as we know, it hasn't gone away, so it's likely more. But the same people that made that uh, made, a, made this DARPA program called Total Information Awareness or TIA. T- right. And the goal of TIA was to basically combine with Main Corps, uh, but you know, through data mining, uh, not only decide who gets on, on the Main Corps list, but also uh, create sort of this per- pre-crime paradigm predictive policing pre-crime they're, they're really doing this so so this t this tia what does tia stand for total information awareness now was that a was government the the program was that originally yes. a government program but it's it now the been darpa pro- program the darpa program but now it's it's a it palantir is doing this peter Thiel. now it's palantir now, uh yes and so what is what is tia t- tell mm-hmm. tell people what uh, that sorry. is yeah, so Total Information Awareness was defunded by Congress uh, not long after it was launched because uh, every mainstream media outlet, the ACLU and organizations like it, across the board said this will end privacy for Americans. It's right. like, it's unconstitutional. So it was defunded. And why? What did it do? Um, what did it do? It sucked up. Uh, it was going to basically spy on all Americans, Total Information Awareness, right, and uh, decide... Uh, who was going to commit a crime before it happened. Yes. Uh, terror attacks before it happened, bioterror, even pandemics before they happened, which is why a lot of the policies that originally uh, Total Information Awareness proposed came back uh, during the Trump administration during COVID, and Palantir uh, was the contractor for all of those. What do you know? So, um, But anyway. So they, so TIA, so just to get, so this TIA thing, which is came from Maine Corps, so TIA, they're going to use. Well, it's related to me. So Corps. related. So it, it, they're going to use every telephone call you ever make, every text you ever make, every Google search, every website you ever go to. They have a way of collecting mm-hmm. all of that data. They collect all of it. Every, and, and so and they put it into a database on you, and and they have this kind of capability. And so immediately yes. after this was invented, you're right. All these. Uh, uh, all these organizations pushed back against it, so they, the government said, okay, we're not going to do it anymore, but then Palantir was like, well, we'll do it, because we don't have those... Well, Go ahead. It's even worse than that. Palantir didn't exist yet. Palantir, Peter Thiel created Palantir um, as Total Information Awareness was getting into trouble and experiencing the public backlash. And as they were setting it up, they used Richard Pearl to connect them with Poindexter, who was running Total Information Awareness, uh, about essentially privatizing the program and having Palantir do what TIA, or Total Information Awareness, had intended to do. And uh, Total Information Awareness, though it was housed in DARPA, was intimately uh, pushed and developed with CIA involvement, particularly the chief information officer of the CIA at the time, a guy named Alan Wade, who was actually a business partner of Ghislaine Maxwell's sister, Christine, fun fact. Uh, Uh, LifeLog sought to, this is what they sought to do. They sought to build a database tracking a person's entire existence. That included an individual's relationships and communications, meaning phone calls, mail, email, all, plus their media consumption habits, their purchases, and much more in order to build a digital record of, quote, everything an individual says, sees, or does. Lifelog. Yeah, would, this program was Lifelog. Yeah. They would. This is Lifelog. They would then take this unstructured data and organize it into discrete episodes or snapshots, while also mapping out relationships, memories, events, and experiences. This seems so Aldous Huxley crazy futuristic, yes. but it's not future. It's here now, and they have it these ca- decades ago. And these, and so the yeah. person in charge of this right now, or the person pushing it in the private sector, would be Peter Thiel. And Peter Thiel is now responsible for JD Vance's funding, and now, and getting JD Vance connected with Donald Trump, and for funding, of being a big funder of Donald Trump and JD Vance's campaign right now. And so that's why this is all important. 
Yeah, it's also important because Palantir is, is really a CIA front company. Right. So um, when they created it and, and picked John Poindexter's brain about how to turn total information awareness into a private company, um, their first funder was the CIA's NQTEL, and the CIA was their only client until 2008. And between 2005 and 2009, uh, the top engineers at Palantir, uh, according to them, made over 200 visits to CIA headquarters for them to develop their product. What he revealed is that the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, they don't work for the president, that the president actually works for them. So who do they work for? And I think you know, do they work for Wall Street? Well, the CIA, when it was created, was all Wall Street lawyers and bankers mm -hmm. and former CIA deputy directors have said that and you know I've, I've maintained for a while the CIA essentially has functioned as the secret police of Wall Street and of the US oligarchy for some time that's why their coups uh, especially if you look at the earlier ones uh, you know like in Guatemala for example or in Iran uh, were for multinational corporations uh, headquartered in the US or with a lot of uh, you know American interests that would be like um, the like confessions of an economic hitman Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. So and uh, some of my recent reports too uh, discuss a lot about PayPal, which Peter Thiel also co-founded, and how they're basically, you know, uh, very intelligence connected, along with eBay. The eBay founder, uh, Pierre Omidyar, now owns PayPal, um, and how a lot of people involved in that particular. Uh, network are involved in a lot of efforts of, uh, of re related to banking that the CIA was actually pushing a few decades ago. Elon Musk was a, one of the PayPal guys at the beginning. Yes. But now Elon Musk, again, he's a mixed bag, right? So he is a big defense contractor. Yes. And he An does. Intelligence contractor building the, you know, intelligence agency spy satellite network. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and he bends the knee to Israel. My opinion, Elon Musk bought Twitter for user data much more than he bought it for free speech. And keep in mind that he's a Pentagon and, and well, he's a military and intelligence contractor, just like Palantir is. So let's back up for a second. So Palantir, Palantir deeply tied to the CIA, it decides who uh, goes on the domestic terror watch list or main core for the CIA based on your online activity. That's what Palantir does. Oh, I'm so on, I'm on LifeLog, that for sure. LifeLog you mentioned earlier, Peter Thiel, at the time he was trying to privatize uh, t total information awareness, which was directly related to LifeLog in many ways, um, he becomes the first early or the, the first outside investor in Facebook that made the company what it is today. Yeah. So, and, so Facebook, uh, Facebook is like a dark launched the same day that LifeLog was shut down and later went on to hire former DARPA directors like Regina Dugan to run top parts of their enterprise, as well as, you know, people like Sheryl Sandberg, who was like deeply tied up with Larry Summers. And isn't it weird that Larry Summers ends up on the board of like Thiel protege companies like Sam Altman's OpenAI and all these other things. Interesting. Um, but, you know, Facebook, what it was doing also was sucking up all of this data. We were freely giving it to them. And this is what, you know, the guy that created LifeLog was like directly said, Facebook is like what LifeLog had was going to be. But no one, people were worried about giving LifeLog data when it was a DARPA program. But now that it's a private company, no one cares. Uh, but we know that Facebook and all these other companies have given our data to the government. Um, even new X policies have said that like your DMs can be given to the government if there are requests made um, and things like that. Because the goal for Twitter, uh, Elon Musk said at the very beginning, is to verify all humans. So have you uh, verify yourself by linking your government issued ID to your Twitter account. But if they don't like what you're saying and or, you know, they think you might commit a crime or something like that before you do it in this pre-crime paradigm, uh, that they've they've set up if they link it to your government id uh, that's troubling and the company now doing it it used to be an israeli intelligence connected yeah. firm uh, now it's stripe which i believe is funded by peter thiel and some of these other uh, paypal guys as far as this pre-crime stuff goes i want to go back to uh, trump's record when he was president the first time after the el paso uh, walmart shooting trump called on big tech to surveil its users and in order to identify uh, shooters before they can shoot, before they can no commit a crime. Way. So it was overtly calling for pre-crime. At the same time, Bill Barr legalized pre-crime by creating a Department of Justice program called DEEP that can that actually has arrested people for Facebook posts. No, D-E-E-P, DEEP. It's called, yes. Mm -hmm. And then shortly thereafter, uh, Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, along with a close friend of Trump, who's the former head of NBC Universal, Bob Wright, uh, we're trying to get Trump to create a new agency called HARPA, a health DARPA, 
Um, and the first program of that that they pitched was called Safe Homes, which is an acronym for something else. Um, and what they wanted to do there uh, was uh, data mine uh, American social media accounts as well as extract information from uh, Amazon Echoes, Google Home, Fitbits, and Apple Watches Jesus. and run it through AI to identify if you've been saying something that uh, shows early signs of neuropsychiatric violence and then based on that determine um, you know, if you need to go to a court-ordered physician visit, if you need to be put under house arrest or anything, or put in preventative detention. They have our data, they've had our data, and they've been profiling us uh, with Palantir. Uh, I mean, they couldn't do it without Palantir. And uh, something needs to be said and something needs to be done. And the fact that there's so many Trump supporters uh, backing this when they're likely, uh, you know, make up the bulk of the list, people that own guns and like, care about the constitution and all this stuff are going to be the people that the, the federal government doesn't like the event 201 what was peter thiel's connection so if people don't know what event 201 was they did a mock they pretended they were doing a mock hey what would happen if a if a, a, a virus got out and how do we handle it they did that like five seconds before we had to go into lockdowns for coronavirus and who, who's they that did that tell people who the they is Right, so Event 201 was hosted by the Johns Hopkins Center uh, for Health Security, which previously the people that uh, ran that, and the, un which included one of the moderators for Event 201, or the people that did the simulation before S the 2001 anthrax attacks that directly predicted what would happen just several months later um, when the anthrax attacks did happen. And obviously the anthrax attacks were intended to go much farther. Uh, until but a lot of their plans for utilizing the aftermath of the anthrax attacks sort of um, uh, things didn't go according to plan basically when it got traced back to the U.S. military that the anthrax <laughs> right. was from the U.S. military, right? Yeah. So um, Event 201 was a simulation very much like that involving a lot of uh, actors that benefited hugely from COVID-19 policies. And one of the, it's not a Peter Thiel connection, but it is a Palantir connection. So uh, one of the longest running consultants for Palantir is a woman named Avril Haines, who was a CIA deputy director under Obama, serving yeah. under John Brennan. Um, and um, Avril Haines was one of you know these people involved directly in the event 201 simulation. And she's and a she, under Biden is the top intelligence official in his administration. So the director of national intelligence. So basically the CIA's boss. And is her. and so who and how what's her connection to Palantir? She's a longtime consultant for them. Unfortunately, we're being led to a world in PayPal and, and some other Thiel connected companies. And really most of big tech and the biggest banks in the country are part of this effort at the World Economic Forum called the Partnership Against Cybercrime, along with the FBI and the Secret Service and Israeli intelligence. And their goal is to have you uh, have a digital ID in order to access the internet, uh, to stop cybercrime and to stop hacking. And they define cybercrime as speech they don't like also that's right so, so if you could be you considered a cyber terrorist if they say you're spreading misinformation you're a terrorist yes. they can put you in jail on with not a charge on it, it, it because of barack obama repealing habeas corpus and all they have to do is say you're a cyber terrorist and that means you said something online they didn't like Again, uh, let's keep in mind, too, as far as it relates to CBDCs, that there, it's very possible to have programmable, surveillable money, not just issued by the central bank, but also the big Wall Street banks. That's which right. Which is exactly what people like Jamie Dimon have talked about that's, doing. That's right. With their JPM coin that's and right. things like that. So even though Trump has disavowed CBDCs, yes. he certainly hasn't disavowed programmable, surveillable money. That's and in right. the United States, it was always most likely to come not from the Fed, but from the Wall Street banks who in the United States own the Federal Reserve System. The most powerful bank in the Federal Reserve System is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Its largest shareholder is J.P. Morgan. That's right. We economic hitmen really have been the ones responsible for creating this first truly global empire. And we work many different ways. But perhaps the most common is that we will identify a, a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil, and then 
arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, industrial parks, ports, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, in addition to our corporations, but really don't help the majority of the people at all. However, those people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt. It's such a big debt they can't repay it, and that's part of the plan that they can't repay it. And so at some point, we economic hitmen go back to them and say, listen, you lost a lot of money, can't pay your debt, so sell your oil, real cheap to our oil companies. Allow us to build a military base in your country or send troops in support of ours to someplace in the world like Iraq or vote with us on the next UN vote to have their electric utility company privatized and their water and sewage system privatized and sold to U.S. corporations or other multinational corporations. So there was that whole mushrooming thing and it's so typical of the way the IMF and the World Bank work. They put a country in debt, it's such a big debt it can't pay it, and then you offer to refinance that debt and, and, and pay even more interest. And you demand this quid pro quo, which you call a conditionality or good governance, which means basically that they've got to sell off their resources, in, in, including many of their social services, their utility companies, their school systems sometimes, their, their, their penal systems, their insurance systems to foreign corporations. So it's a, it's a double, triple, quadruple whammy.